What does music on an alien planet sound like? Rory drinks Monster, but has he tried Loch Ness Monster? Answers to these questions and more on this episode of This Paranormal Life! Woo! Welcome back. To this Paranormal Life, this is the weekly comedy podcast for every Tuesday. Me, Kit Grimmel Venet, this guy sitting across from me, Rory Powers. Each week we get into a brand new paranormal case and decide by the end of the episode whether it's truly paranormal or not. How the hell are you doing today, Rory? Doing fantastic. And two great questions right off the bat. While we don't know what it sounds like, uh, George Lucas himself has confirmed that uh, music from other planets is called j- Instead of Jesus. instead of jazz. That's right. Yeah, I forgot that. That's what he calls the music being played in the cantina. Uh, very early in an episode to say the J word. We might, <laughs> let, maybe we'll beep that. Yeah. Because I, I think, think we're we still... just got dropped from YouTube, <laughs> TikTok, just about everywhere. Thanks to that. Demonetized. And secondly, you know, you talked about me drinking Monster Energy drink. Yes, I'm drinking a Red Bull right now. But... We have been pretty caffeinated recently in the studio because listeners to the after party will know we recently got a coffee machine. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So if you if you here we go. Here we go. If you want three, two, one, go. If you've been wondering why we were so uh, lethargic and boring for the last, I don't know, 300 episodes, well, worry not, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be go, go, go for the next 300 episodes. Hopefully, maybe 600. Let's go, go, go. Yeah, we got them. And, you know, we got a lot of free uh, pods with the coffee maker. Uh, with, with varying degrees of intensity, we got uh, intensity level 6, intensity level 8, inten- inten- intensity level 12. It's really great that it doesn't go below 6. Because that would be strange if it went below 6 because it would kind of seem like it defeats the purpose of getting a coffee because it would be like, well, why would I do that? I could just have a cup of tea if I didn't exactly. want to go above intensity level 6. And um, 6 was nothing. 6 did nothing to me. My morning cup now is four sixes in a bowl. <laughs> and I kind of lap it up like a dog <laughs> on all fours. So you're on a... You're a 24? I'm rocking the 24s. Woo! Yeah, whoo! I'm feeling good. Yeah. Is it hot in here, though? It is hot, right? What I'm trying to say, Rory, is I'm glad that you got the machine hooked up in the studio, into our veins, for the first time, because uh, it means that uh, we can radically change the format of the show going forward. In the past, up to now, the last six years... Slow down, We've been Chief. doing... Sorry, no, no, no. Even for me, it's doing, a little fast. <laughs> uh, we've been doing a mere one case a week. No more, brothers and sisters. We will be doing six today. Whoa! Uh, about seven minute kind of micro episodes each. One after the other consecutive order will be coming down. And yes, no, yes, yes, no. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Is that true? Because I think one after another. And then that way, uh, we'll have completed all the paranormal cases in the universe, by my calculations, by my calculations, <laughs> This okay. summer. No more coffee for you. Oh, no, really? No, no more coffee. That sounds like a terrible idea. We don't want to finish all the you... cases. Yeah, kids drinking it's more as we speak. empty. Oh, God, I got yeah. my jeans. Uh, anyway. Uh. What I'm trying to say is we have a brand new paranormal case I'm excited to get into Woo. today, Rory. Uh, frankly, nothing to do with uh, the stuff I talked about at the beginning, uh, but that's fine. Rory, today we're talking about art. Okay. Are you an art guy? Do you know much about art? Yeah, I love art. You know that. <laughs> You know me. Rory, famously an art guy. When you, know, you think, he's always talking about it. When you think Rory, you think art. Yeah. You think sculptures. You think marble. You think... Right, right. Yeah, marble statue. Tiny penis covered by a leaf. <laughs> no, no, no. I think yes. more like, uh, you know, when you think of the greats, you think of Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Rory Powers. You know, it's kind of, they're all synonymous oh, are with Are you a visual creation. artist? I don't really remember that. I'm an audio artist. What you was the last piece right you made? We're making it right now. Well, this episode I, I'm making is it. For... I researched this case and presenting it. So yeah, I think this is you're fine. you're the marble, this and I have to. Original. I have to carve something good out of this heap of <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's why I'm the artist, and you're the slab. Okay, so I'm the 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 beautiful virgin virgin, <laughs> uncarved slab of marble, and you're going to hack away and reveal the masterpiece within. Exactly. Exact. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> I walk in to see the finished piece of marble. I'm like, you took me out of it completely. It's just a statue <laughs> of you. Uh, that's right. We are talking about specifically visual art, you know, Great. paintings, things like that. You know, they don't teach a lot about art at Paranormal Harvard, except for maybe the art of war. Yeah. So I'm pretty uneducated, but uh, even better than having an art degree 
I did need a minimum wage job in about 2017, so I did work in the Tate Modern Art Gallery. One of my favorite art galleries uh, in the world, and definitely in London. So, you know, whenever I got that job, I had to do a kind of social network style crunch montage of learning a bunch of dead guys' names so I could fake like I knew what I was talking about when I worked there. Right, because people, you know, similar to a restaurant when they ask for a, a wine recommendation, people would go to Kit in the museum and say, hey, I only have 45 minutes. What should I see? What should I hit? What are the, the big soup ones? can. The what? That's what I always reply with. You ever seen the can of soup? Campbell's? Is it a Campbell's? Yeah, It's by right? Andy Warhol, isn't it? Hey, is that right? this guy is an art guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is me and the thing going about. You, brother, you know more than I do. All I know is there's a big old can of soup on the second floor. Oh, no, I'm thinking of the painting of the... That's what I mean. Soup. Oh. The big old painting of the can of soup. Yeah. By is Andy it? Warhol. Yeah, it <laughs> okay. is. It is. Okay, okay. Uh, but you're right, qualify. people would come to me uh, asking for recommendations and asking uh, even my opinions uh, because people come along and, uh, you know, I have sympathy. Maybe they're the Rory powers of their friend circle. They got no one. They're such a genius about art and they have no one to talk to about it. So these people come into the gallery and they see me walking along. Well, they go, have friends. Sorry, you made it sound like the Rory powers of the group doesn't have friends. So he goes no, to no, museums so they don't by have himself. Friends. No, no, no. Okay. They just, they, they have friends, but they've, they don't have friends that they could like talk to to about art okay yeah I'll, t I'll take that yeah Cause they're not alone friends. yeah because I have yeah. friends that's what I'm saying and if I if they well, if most I wanted to were alone actually which is <laughs> but if they didn't want to be they could be with you came here alone, alone today right yeah, well yeah so sometimes it's you're alone <laughs> it's work I don't, I'm not gonna come with someone else you know that'd be yeah. weird yeah, I went home alone, spent the night alone, woke and up you, alone. And you but... do live alone, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, a guy's got to have a little okay. space, you know? Interesting, interesting. You know? You know who else was alone? Go on. Da Vinci. I don't know who he was. Or what, who's the guy who cut off his ear? V a complete, wow, I just got real cultural whiplash. That was... Vincent alone. That's what they no. called him. Vincent to his Van friends. Gogh. Uh, that was definitely a different person. Look, the point is that completely against my will, I now know a tiny bit about art and unfortunately like it on some level. Art is basically the meaning of life, Rory, and also it's history. And through studying it, we can tell about the history of the world and of mankind. From 50,000 year old cave paintings in Spain of men and women hunting animals to the Renaissance and Caravaggio painting of Jesus being placed in his tomb to Rory's disturbing childhood drawings of hedgehogs with chiseled ab muscles. We know what was going on in the past thanks to art. It's true, it's true. The original photograph. So Rory, that made me think, what if buried in the history of art is a secret history of the paranormal too? Hello. What if we can find clues to the world's most paranormal events and creatures hidden in paintings and works of art just because that's what was happening at the time? I love this already. This is very Da Vinci Code level investigation. Yeah. Looking at ancient paintings and trying to decipher hidden messages or little secrets that have been buried there. I am into this. Right, just in the way that uh, Michelangelo, whenever he was painting the Sistine Chapel, I'll stop now, Sistine Chapel, <laughs> he, you know, supposedly, you know, he, he shows, what is it, f***ing, who is it touching fingies Adam with, touching God, I Adam, think. Adam touching fingies with God. Yeah and kind of receiving the spark of life and whatever, you know, the story goes that like, uh, Michelangelo didn't even actually believe in God. So his big like Banksy statement to the church was he made it, he made God, uh, it goes in like a clamshell or something, isn't he? And if you look at the image of like what God's sitting in, it looks amazingly like a human brain. And so, oh. so it was like, was he saying that like man invented God in his mind. Oh, that's... I have never heard that one before. So there's a that's secret cool code of the artist where they trying to tell us through the pieces, through the ages, what was really going on. That God is a merman. <laughs> okay, might cut that. Um, <laughs> I'm on to you, God. Rory, picture this scene. You're strolling through Florence, Italy, a contender for the single most important city on earth for artistic masterpieces whether it's the Galleria dell'Accademia with its Michelangelo's David or the famous Uffizi Gallery, housing works by Da Vinci, Caravaggio and Raphael. 
But amongst these masterpieces, there's one that is very interesting. If you go to the Palazzo Vecchio, up on its second floor, there is a painting called Madonna and Child with the Infant Saint John. Hmm, okay. A painting that has confused and caused debate for years because of what is depicted. To make things even more mysterious, no one knows who painted it or where it came from. Oh, that's cool. Now, I will say there are theories and good bets on who it might have been, but they don't know for sure. Rory, check this one out. Okay, very classic looking old timey picture here. We've got a woman in a robe, hands together, bowing down, almost praying over a little baby that is worryingly ripped. This baby is jacked. Worryingly have you seen this or baby? satisfyingly ripped? This baby has pecs, a six pack, biceps. Very strange. I showed this to my daughter Cora and was like, where you been? Where you been? It's, yeah. it's a new year, new you, Cora. You need to get, I don't care if you're two years old. You need to get in the gym. Look at this baby. Yeah. This baby lived 500 years ago and it was jacked as all hell. Yeah, they didn't even have whey protein back then. Yeah. Uh, the baby's being helped by another small baby with a halo on top. It looks like they're almost on some kind of boat or something. But yes, this is a, this is a, t a somewhat typical and familiar Renaissance religious scene. It's the Madonna and the baby. It's Jesus and Mary. Right, I see. I will say. Yeah. Might be getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Some pretty weird shit going on in the background. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're cooking already. Rory's, <laughs> Rory is a keen paranormal investigator and his eyes have already been drawn. Now I'm assuming you have some sort of explanation for the objects that are in the sky behind Mary. There are cyborgs. Bender from Futurama is in the background. <sighs> Very strange. Oh, well, why don't you describe what you're seeing as a kind of first-hand witness? Well, it's hard to tell because this is a photograph of a painting. What is like an, an artifact? Yeah. And what is part of the painting? Like, are these smudges? Is it a little hole or a nick? Or is it actually paint? Um, on one side of her, it's a UFO. <laughs> oh, It is an alien okay. craft by the looks of things <laughs> floating in the sky. <laughs> mm -hmm. A cigar-shaped mm -hmm. dark object just over her shoulder. Directly behind her is a much larger, darker blob that seems to be some sort of distant spacecraft <laughs> floating in the sky. And then to the left is what can only be described as a small army of jellyfish raining down <laughs> from the clouds. Well, I can't say I'm not delighted with your interpretation of it because I thought, you know, I come into these not knowing how much I'm going to have to uh, fight you to kind of see what's going on in the image, Rory. But I I'm actually glad you've pointed, because I'm going to hone in on one of these, but I'm actually glad you brought up a couple of the other things because the thing is, you've got to remember, this is a religious image. This is not a photographic interpretation of what was going on one day. Hence, the baby with a halo. This is some kind of angel. Yeah, also the baby that looks like Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Right. I'm not sure this Wolverine is Wolverine era <laughs> Hugh a... Jackman. Not the greatest showman, God no. <laughs> um, I, what, what I'm saying is we do, of course, have to be prepped that we shouldn't expect the completely literal in these images. We should expect some kind of imagery going on. And yet I do want to draw your attention to the UFO. Yeah, um, sure. Because it is, even within these kind of religious symbols going on, it feels out of place. Actually, I thought this was cool. I didn't get this right away. Your eyes are drawn to the UFO. Actually... To drive it home, there is a shepherd and a dog. Oh my God. And he's like squinting, hand over, shielding his eyes from the sun, looking up at the UFO on the hill. That is weird. It's funny because you, you did point out how out of place this looks amongst all the religious iconography. And you are right. If there even was something, they were going to put something in the sky, it would be an olive branch. <laughs> it would be a dove. Yeah. It would be, you know, some kind of religious symbolism we see all yes. the time. That is a black yeah. orb. If we want to get dramatic, maybe a burning bush, but this is <gasps> sure, sure. really... And wait till you see, Roy, I have a close-up. <laughs> which is quite satisfying. I'm like, there's little guys in there. Shut up. That is not... That can't be a close-up. <laughs> It is a close-up. Oh, no way. All right, this isn't an artifact because it's glowing. They drew little glow lines on it, and there's orbs coming out of the orb. There's, like, circular windows on the craft. <laughs> That's so f***. 
<laughs> it was like portholes on a UFO with glow lines from a 500-year-old painting. I don't know what to say about this. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize we were going to be doing this today. So it's no surprise this painting has drawn so much attention. It's just this object is so similar to modern depictions of UFOs, UAPs, flying saucers, uh, and hundreds of years before any flying machine, let alone the concept of a UFO. This painting is actually commonly referred to because of this stuff as Madonna of the UFO. Wow. So, so if you search that online, you'll also find it. Um, Rory, the terrifying thing of this kind of bombshell start to our paranormal investigation is this is only the beginning. I have more groundbreaking images to show you. Well, that's one hell of a start, let me tell you. I should say, of course, that the MIBs have uh, their explanations and their excuses for what's going on here. Art historians have explained this image away, claiming that the shape is some kind of religious icon or, get this, an unfinished angel. Oh yeah, sure, bud. But paranormal believers say F that. It's too similar. And I guess I should say the quiet bit out loud, which is, of course, what we're referring to here. If you're new to this paranormal life or you're new to discussing UFOs, this general idea is ancient alien theory. The idea that UFOs, of course, entered the zeitgeist in the 50s and 60s with places like Roswell, but actually, paintings like this suggest, what if they've been coming for hundreds of years or even thousands of years? Yeah, you know, a lot of crazy theories out there by a lot of different people. You know, people say that aliens built the pyramids, which mm -hmm. I personally think is nonsense. But when we're talking about aliens visiting Earth at some point in the past, not only do we have to consider the fact that that did happen at some point, but also, did the past happen in the past? You think time is a straight line? What if aliens appearing okay, in the I past just... happens in the future? Yeah. You know? Let's right. get crazy here. Let, let... Give me a couple more sixes. Let... Fire up that coffee machine. I want five hey, more we can, sixes. We can't have you on a 48 right now. Okay? I need to be on the level. I uh, need to be on the level. Let him cook. <laughs> me cook? Bon appetit, brother. <laughs> the thought is fully formed. <laughs> Oh, well, we've, we've eaten already. <laughs> we've eaten okay. the meal. That's it. Okay, you we know? all we all ate. Uh, uh, you know what if we're getting crazy here? What if what if what if aliens going to that event that exists in the painting is something that happens in their past, in their future? I've said this before. I don't understand how time works. All right. All I know, right, is I read. Go into your local. If you haven't read it before, go into your local book purveyor. Go on audible.com and uh, and. Read Carlo Rovelli, the physicist, yeah. his books. He has some great, short, digestible, best-selling books about physics. And he has at least one on the nature of time. All I know is this guy's a brainiac. Yeah. A world-renowned physicist. And I'm pretty sure page one of the book on time is like, time don't exist. Right. And time, and he's like, time. It's a human concept. And if We've it does exist, it. it goes forwards, backwards, up, down, left, right, loop the loop. Yeah, and, and he's kind of like the more I study to be honest brother the less I know so he, <laughs> he explains a lot of ways in which it can be manipulated in which it uh, is an illusion and I don't know if that makes any sense to what, what you've said but uh, I'm here for it yeah that, that's enough to just blow anyone's mind right. how about instead of going forward or back in time you go left <laughs> there you go that's enough <laughs> I'm sure the listener is going to think that I've completely cocked up paraphrasing Carlo Rovelli, but here I've, I've just looked up an actual quote from him to give you an idea of uh, how little me and Rory understand time. This expert physicist, he says in one of his books, he says, quote, if I ask whether two events, one on Earth and another on a different planet, are happening at the same moment, the answer would be, the question doesn't make sense. There's no such thing as the same moment definable in the universe. The present of the universe is meaningless. That's beautiful. He also said, we inhabit time as fish live in water. That one's weirder. So uh, what we have learned is studying time makes you lose your mind. Yeah. Um, so we won't think about it any further. I think it's about time we move on to image number dos. Our next painting dates from around the same time as Madonna del UFO. It was painted by Carlo Crivelli, wow, very close to Carlo Rivelli, in Italy as well. In this one, the Annunciation with Saint Emidius. 
Mary, she's back again, is said to be receiving the message from the angel Gabriel that she will give birth to the Christian Messiah. The only issue is she seems to be receiving the message from a laser beam shot directly into her brain from an extraterrestrial craft. Okay, that's pretty bad. The Annunciation of Saint Emidius. I'm starting to think Emidius was the name of the craft that came from Proxima B. <laughs> okay, this is... What do you want me to say, man? <laughs> well, describe it for the good people at home. <laughs> All right, look, look, look. This one, it's kind of a, a shot of a city. You see an alleyway, you see a building, some rooftops. Uh, but we crucially see inside the buildings. And inside one of them, we have, uh, what's her name? Amidius. <laughs> Kneeling down on the ground uh, inside of her house, looking like she's reading presumably the Bible. But yes, as Kit pointed out, there is a, a yellow laser beam shooting down from the clouds through the wall and into her skull. Yeah. I will say, you know, because the first picture, the problem that we had with it was that it didn't, it was trying to convey a message that wasn't using religious iconography. Mm -hmm. This picture, really using religious iconography. The laser beam itself. Oh, yes, laser beams. Famously, well, uh... It's Famously, <laughs> Jesus had a plasma cannon <laughs> that he would blast the heretics with. He was basically the first Jedi, Jesus. Uh huh. What I will say, this quote-unquote laser beam does look like a sunbeam coming down from heaven. Real, that is real specific religious iconography. Halfway through, it when becomes... When have you seen a sunbeam the <laughs> diameter of... A laser beam. Okay. Well, I, this isn't a real event. So. Also, let me just, <laughs> let me just double check. Is the beam coming from the sun, Rory? Or is the beam coming from a saucer-shaped <laughs> object? It, 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 you're jumping ahead here. It is coming down from a swarm of clouds. <laughs> yeah, I, I, will like a I will concede it was precisely between the shapes of a swirl of clouds yeah. and a saucer. It is, it is saucer-like but also interpretable as clouds. Yep. And the beam of light, even as it travels down slowly, the laser beam, yes. be becomes a white dove as it approaches her. Sure. So the beam actually, if you look, isn't even hitting her. It's becoming the dove as it floats down. So this one, a little less, I would say specifically paranormal. But what I will say is, as we know, Kit, when we've researched these kind of old paranormal events from the past, what people do is when they're trying to depict them, they're using their own frame of reference. That's right. So let's just say we are talking about a very, very enthusiastic Christian demographic. If they do see a UFO in the sky, that's God. That's an angel. That's what that is. So I wouldn't be surprised why it would be depicted in this way, uh, in, in this painting. This kind of thing is exciting, enticing to me, because now we're getting into the real stuff, which is, okay, we see one where it's undeniably a flying saucer. Yeah. And then we see another where there's something else in the sky. But yes, this time it's projecting uh, the grace of God or some kind of divine knowledge into Mary via arguably laser beam. And then you start to wonder, oh shit, is it one and the same? We're going, we're going from ancient alien theory to alien Jesus theory, <laughs> which is that many of or some of the Abrahamic religious events as described in the Bible and worshipped for thousands of years may have underpinnings in paranormal events. Sure. That uh, not saying that Jesus was an alien, but what if? Okay, Jesus came along and Christianity existed, but then like you say, uh, like we saw in the Portuguese Our Lady Fatima episode. Yes. When something else happened that was paranormal, it was interpreted through the lens of Christianity. Exactly. That being said. Go on. One of the people just walking on the street here has bird wings on their back. Uh -huh. So this is already a pretty artistic interpretation. You know, I don't think we could take this as fact. And I also thought at the bottom of the picture, there was a dildo on the floor. <laughs> well, there wasn't, so... <laughs> I don't want you putting that in people's minds. Uh, you tell me, brother. That looks pretty suspicious to me. That's a courgette <laughs> or a squash. It is weird that it's there because <laughs> right? there's no real reference point. But that definitely had some other 
meaning. Okay, moving <laughs> the dildo? on. Dildo? Yes. All right. Okay. I think the dildo is in uh, the Annunciation of Saint Chlamydius. <laughs> oh shit! Hey, let's pay some bills. Uh, <laughs> okay, we've got to move on to our next image. It seems because I'm losing Rory, but that was to be expected nice. as we go through the ups and downs of this case. Next up is the Livre des Bonnes Mères, a 15th century French manuscript on etiquette and manners. But the artist Jacques Legrand left readers confused and astonished by one particular illustration. On sheet 129, there's an image of the goddess of fortune and her spinning wheel. But again, it's the background that we're interested in because hovering above is what can only be described as a medieval death star. What? And again, even more dramatically this time, there are peasants on the hill reacting in fear. Whoa! All right. I was just about to have a go at all of these artists for being too cowardly mm. to just depict the UFOs instead of hiding them in the, the <sighs> distance and in the shadows. This mother hid nothing. It is the centerpiece of yeah. this painting. Yeah, there is a giant golden goblet floating in the sky you know, r reminiscent of some sort of a uh, holy hand grenade. It is pretty ominous looking. And yeah, there is kind of gold glowing light beams in the sky with a bunch of dudes on a hilltop kind of looking at it uh, in fear and suspense. That yeah. is a weird one. I it, really don't know what's going on in this painting. Because it's gold, I sort of interpret it as metal, but it could just be shining or something. But, but it, it definitely, to our modern eye... It's giving metal object, metal sphere in the sky. Now, is there a rational explanation by art historians about what this could be that isn't a UFO? Allegedly, the savvy art historian explanation for such things is that the sphere represents the world itself. What? And they kind of say, what well... What planet are they on then? Yeah, I mean, in no world is that a world. It's got intricate carvings and markings. There's nothing to indicate that that is supposed to be. I mean, maybe very symbolically, you know, figuratively, it's a globe, of course, but yeah. why all the carvings? Why are people looking at it and scared of it? Why is there other shining things in the sky? It's made of solid gold by the looks of it. If that's a planet, I want to find it. What, what do you, I think it is cool. What do you think about this trend of there being people reacting to this background information. Yeah, well, it gives you a bit of context that whatever this thing is in the painting, it ain't normal. Yeah. Even in this time, people are surprised. Yeah. It's not like they're like, oh, yes, uh, yeah, the glowing orb that is in the sky and it has been with us since the dawn of time. Even in the 1200s, people in the paintings are like, what the f*** is that? I understand we're applying like a, a modern viewpoint, but it's like, doesn't this just feel like if you were an artist hundreds of years ago, doesn't this just feel logical that by they're using background information to explain what's happening and provide context to what's happening in the foreground? Yeah. So in the images that show the birth of the Messiah, this supernatural crazy thing that's happened. Oh, well, what do you know? In the background, there's a ship. <laughs> and there's a shepherd like, yo, what's going on with that ship? And then in this one, we have a goddess of fortune, another supernatural entity that either teaches or represents some kind of supernatural thing, this being. And then in the background, people running in fear from this thing in the sky. Are they trying to say the thing came down, the people were scared, the goddess came out? Listen, you really think the three wise men followed a star? You've they followed a glowing be. object moving through the sky at terminal velocity, <laughs> making zero sound. I don't have to be a genius to tell you what that is, and it ain't a star. <laughs> I actually never thought about that. That's pretty yeah. badass. They took them there. Let him cook. Keep, <laughs> let, keep providing him vegetables and, and meats and fire because he needs to keep cooking. This is why we shouldn't podcast together because I'm saying <laughs> the dumbest shit and you're like, yes, yes, yeah, he's, he's keep going, keep going. Okay, well, the good news is... What if we can huh? eat dog food? Like it's fine for humans. Okay, I think it is we time We could for eat break. it technically. All right, next up. Rory, all the artworks we've looked at up until now, show just one UFO. You ready for the invasion? Oh, that's never a good question to ask. This is an altarpiece in a church 
called the miracle of the snow. <laughs> it's quite funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can see why Kit would show me this picture. Look, it is a lot of people in a town all gathered around in a circle. One dude is sweeping what looks like a patch of snow on the ground, okay. white. Uh, and above them is, it looks like Mary and Joseph, I assume. It's a see. guy and a gal. Who is that supposed to be? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Uh, up in the clouds, looking down upon them. But crucially, below the clouds, there are things falling out of the sky. They are cylindrical. They are long. They are shaped like cigars. There are many of them. I assume what the artist was trying to portray here was the falling of snow. Which, I don't know, maybe when this was painted, they assumed it was parts of clouds coming down from mm -hmm. the sky. Uh, so they have kind of, instead of, as we all know, snow comes from the freezing of water droplets coming from the sky. That's why they're little flakes. This person seems to think like the cloud breaks into smaller clouds and smaller clouds until it becomes snow on the ground. So it basically does become clouds, 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 clouds all the way down. It looks like aliens. It looks like <laughs> a scene from Independence Day. This is crazy. Because they are, to be clear, lined up in a formation in the sky. Yeah. And and Mary yeah. and Joseph are, it's kind of, it's almost as if like that's the craft that's closest to us and they are the pilots of it. <laughs> well, well, okay now. If you're, I don't think if, we could say if that. If we're saying, if we're saying that they are crafts, which you're not, but I'm saying, if they were crafts, <laughs> it's almost as if we're saying these two are in the sky piloting. Because why else are they in the sky? Call this one Mary, because it's the mothership. <laughs> Heaven. That's why they're in the sky, I believe, right? Isn't that... Sure. You know, they're, they're in a halo-esque orb. Yeah. No, I, I, and I will say, it's not... This one is not cut and dry, but it is, I think, a, it's a it's an interesting one to compare to the others. And I will give it to you that the ones in the distance look most like uh, flying saucers, but then the perspective that we gain here is that Mary and Joseph... Uh, are atop the cloud that's closest to us and we can see that it, it really is it's kind of cloud fluffy and uh, on top so it probably is they're probably clouds a cloud now worryingly rory there's actually a woman in the crowd in this one who's missing a head oh that is strange it looks like something's gone on there though there's a smudge or it's been erased or replaced or something you're right rory it looks like it has been altered somehow potentially to remove evidence that's why i scanned this one personally into photoshop and digitally altered the image to try and recreate what might have been there before i already hate what you're going to show me all right kit drew an alien head on top of what the if actual head the, what if the mibs have got to this photo got to this painting before we could i think after five years, this is a low point for evidence. <laughs> All right, let's and, move and on. You <laughs> need to upload that picture so people can see what you just showed me. <laughs> Things are only ramping up because if the miracle of the snow showed the alien invasion, our next image shows us the pilots themselves in damn near perfect detail. This is the Visor de Cani Fresco, an almost 700 year old painting in Kosovo. Here we can see the overall image. Yep. With, there are crafts in the sky. Just, yeah, there's objects. Yeah, that one's weird, to be fair. <laughs> there's no way that's what that looks like. <laughs> that is, look. <laughs> like, that's a low res image, but you can see the person is there. All right, this is pretty weird. Look, it, it is a guy looking like he's flying through the sky in a, in a spiky comet. Yeah. You could argue that he's in a cockpit. <laughs> he's in, there's like a cubby inside the quote unquote comet. In the world of religious Renaissance artwork, you should never hear, hear the word cockpit. One thing I want to bring up, I think it actually has a remarkable resemblance to the Sputnik, the Russian uh, <laughs> satellites that went into space. Yeah, sure. Come on. What, but what is the conclusion from that? Mm. That's a Russian saddle? That's a Russian <laughs> cosmonaut who went hit a wormhole and went back in time? <laughs> no. But I'm just saying that it looks more like an existing <laughs> spacecraft yeah. than a comet. I mean, the dude inside the comet looks like 
a protagonist from the anime series Attack on Titan. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know if we can draw too many conclusions from the, the look of the thing. I mean, not being a dickhead, not trying to argue a very strong case here, I, I wouldn't want to be an art historian trying to explain that one. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, those art historians, they're wearing sunglasses and a full suit. <laughs> Suddenly, you're you're like, hey, what's this one? They just reach in the pocket, they take out a little earpiece, put the earpiece, and they're like, let me just, uh, I just need to, ah, yes, I can think clearly now. Um, well, those are, of course, uh, the, the wise men. They are now flying. They can fly now. Leaving the spacecraft behind for a moment, we'll continue on the theme of these pilots themselves. Next up is a painting of St. Augustine from 1475 and showing something pretty terrifying. The church claims that this image is supposed to be the devil, but UFO experts argue, could this be an early alien encounter? Whoa! When was this painted? I think a similar sort of a time. Listen, I will not be able to describe to you in full detail what is going on here, because this is an insane painting. We got a we got a religious guy. Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine, on the left, fully kitted out, the robe, the book, mm, the the, mm, the mm. scepter, the big hat, looking like a noble, righteous guy. To his right, trying to grab the book out of his hands, <laughs> is a six foot tall green imp man, mm-hmm. with a crooked nose, fanged teeth, horns. And the most crucial thing that I have to point out is his asshole is also a mouth. (laughs) He has two eyes on his butt cheeks and his butthole has teeth. So he's kind of a Seymour butts. His tail is the (laughs) nose. Yeah. And there's a whole face down there. Uh, You know, I can see why people would think that this is an alien or a creature from another planet. Fortunately, though, again, we are seeing uh, more of the religious iconography than the paranormal and alien iconography. You know, this thing has hooves. This thing has horns. I thought the the the, the devil was more of a red thing, but yeah. maybe that's like Coca-Cola getting involved with Santa. Maybe the OG was green. I don't know. Uh, but that's a pretty terrifying... <laughs> right. The devil got a brand deal about 100 years ago yeah. to make him red. Yeah. You know, again, this is more of a, a pun, in, pun intended devil's advocate type argument of these devil images we've maybe become a little familiar with over the over our, our our modern lifetimes we've seen these kinds of images roughly images of demons images of devils and it just makes us wonder i suppose where did they come from and what is the similarity or comparison between greys and these demons there are similarities the skinny waifishly thin gray uh, slimy limbs and skin, the big head, the big eyes, and other kind of disgusting things like a mouth for a butt. You know, it, it does make you wonder. You go, you know, I, I don't know. It, there's probably someone out there who would argue like, you know, that this is what's happened. As the world has become less religious, we've just replaced that iconography with modern iconography. We've replaced the idea of demons and the devil with aliens. Mm, is that true? Is that true? Because alien, you know. Let's move on because you don't agree. (laughs) I'm worried I might have lost you on that one. Well, let me reel you right back in again. This is potentially the best yet. Okay. 1710, The Baptism of Christ. This is by one of Rembrandt's students, the Dutch Ert de Gelder. How do you explain this one to the listeners? (laughs) Sorry. It took me a second to figure out what you would have a problem with here. Because... (laughs) Because it's actually just a beautiful painting of, uh, you know, baptism taking place up in the mountains. Very dark, very gloomy. A lot of people watching. There are sunbeams from heaven and the sunbeams are coming from a craft. They are coming from a, yeah, a rectangle. There are tractor beams coming from heaven. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm starting to see why this is happening quite a lot in these depictions. Because I assume what they're trying to do is like the heavens opening up and the Mm -hmm. sun raining down. Unfortunately, the sun raining down looks a lot like a tractor beam. And the opening in the clouds does often look like a craft, unfortunately. Uh, I thought I knew pretty much all of the... The Bible stories, the canon ones, you know, start to finish. 
But uh, I don't remember Jesus getting baptized. There is no sun in this image. You're what? claiming that you're claiming the clouds are parting and that sunbeams are coming down. This is <laughs> this is just a saucer in the sky, <laughs> and there is just four beams coming down, illuminated. I mean, again, you know, I, I, this is what's fascinating to us. Like, I really hadn't thought about this that much, right? That is part of like ancient religious iconography is that clouds part, beams come down and illuminate uh, a person, a believer. <laughs> uh, but in the paranormal world, a saucer appears, the clouds part, a saucer appears and tractor beams come down. Like this is literally out of every B-movie sci-fi ever. Yeah. The tractor beams come down to lift a person up. All right, well, devil's advocate here. If it's a UFO craft with tractor beams coming down, why? Are they trying to abduct Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jesus was baptized, <laughs> wasn't he? That's what I'm wondering. I don't remember. Yeah, I think he was. It seems like kind of a pointless thing to do. They're like, hey, man, you got to get baptized if you want to be in the church. He's yeah. like, do you, do you know who my dad is? Yeah, John the Baptist. That's how you got the name. That's how you get that gamer tag. <laughs> Oh, wow. Is by baptizing Jesus himself. Holy shit. John the Baptist was actually his cousin as well. What? And I assume not in the kind of modern way that you call anyone cousin. I right. Think literally cousin! For me, for me. You gotta baptize me, cousin! cousin. <laughs> <laughs> we got orders! We got orders! We got one communal bread! One tiny bit of wine! <laughs> Behind! Behind! Come on, cousin. Cousin, cousin, how many fish and how many loaves of bread do we have for have for service today? So we got, we got one loaf of bread. Are you kidding me? We got 5,000 people coming today. <laughs> Keep breaking it up. Keep breaking it up and handing it out. Oh, Jesus shit. just chain smoking. <laughs> oh, man, we got to do that sketch video. <laughs> Behind. If the feeding of the 5,000 was in the bear. Just, just like, oh shit, all the orders come through. It's like, I oh, zoom in, bread, fish, bread, fish. <laughs> bread. Jesus is just looking at all the orders of bread and fish coming in, smoking. All you hear is. And he's like, someone give me some holy water. <laughs> okay, you may be glad to know, Rory. We're at the end. Okay. Because I know you're feeling a little bombarded and probably a little confused because you were sort of bought in at the beginning with some pretty hard hitting shit. And then, you know, we got a little lost along the way. But I believe, I really believe I can rein you back in. Controversially, I think I could rein you back in with something you may have seen before. In fact, you have seen before. All right. All right. I didn't want to round out this episode without revisiting an absolute classic TPL episode and one that is incredibly relevant to this investigation. Let's see how many of the commune remember this one. In Japan in the 1800s, inside the pages of an obscure archive of shipwrecks, we had the Utsuro Bune. The pages show a strange craft said to have washed ashore in Hitachi province in 1803. Covered in unknown symbols and made from unrecognizable materials, it said the craft contained a mysterious woman. We have heard this story before. Didn't we cover this before? It was a full episode, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Way, 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 way back. The account stated that this woman from inside the craft wore odd clothing and spoke a bizarre language. Utsuro Bune translates to hollow boat, and UFO experts suggest that this may be evidence of a historic extraterrestrial crash landing. Let me jog your memory, Rory, of what that f***ing 1800s manuscript looked like. Can't wait to see this. Wow! I mean, get put all that other shit aside. This is what we were looking for. This is an old-timey Japanese, is it, did you say? Japanese painting of a UFO. And these guys weren't around when they were painting this thing. No. There are, <laughs> there are gas vents on the side. Golden panels that look like solar panels, but in the 1800s. Yeah, a woman wearing very modern clothes by the look of it. And uh, yeah, you can even see the under paneling of the craft that looks like metal strips. Uh, yeah, they're not messing around here. 
you know, several kind of detailed patterns. It's almost like corrugated iron there. And it, hard to describe, but uh, just unmistakably, unmistakably a flying saucer 200 years before they would become um, popular. Yeah. Or ev ever seen, really. Yeah, I believe this episode when we investigated it was a double no. <laughs> but... Is that true? I think so. Rory is right. I've checked the record and that episode was a double no. Damn. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what else we packaged into it because on the face of it, this feels like an instant yes. <laughs> it's pretty telling if... By investigating it for three minutes, it's a double yes. But when you do a 45-minute episode on it, it was quite clearly a double no. <laughs> yeah, really hoping uh, I would have come down on a yes, at least to to uh, fight the good fight and claim that uh, I believed in that one at the time. Starting to see why Kit decided this episode should be only five minutes spent on every single case <laughs> and right. no more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Rory. We have looked at some insane images today, and I would say that this only covers a fraction of what is out there. And even so, we did cover a range of styles. I did want to include that one at the end because I've realized that, of course, we did focus a lot on Renaissance imagery for the first bit. And so I want to get in a couple of others in there. And pretty telling, actually, that the most obscure and the most distant to us, this Japanese one from mm. a manuscript, was the most compelling single image of a UFO in history, arguably, maybe debatable whether it beats the, the first one that I showed you. Yeah, that one was really good. Um, you started strong. But that the cool thing is, because it spans a hundreds and hundreds of years and across countries and across artistic styles, this isn't a trend. This isn't like, oh, oh, back in the day, these three artists, they like to draw angels like this and that's why it exists. No, we're seeing it across different styles, which makes it that much more interesting. Roy, what are you thinking today? I think it's very cool, the range that we have here. You know, as you said, artwork that isn't just from one time period, uh, spanning multiple periods of uh, art and art history, and even countries throwing in the Japanese piece at the end there. As you said, yeah, it's it's very cool to see whatever this thing is, whatever, whether it is an uh, uh, object in the sky or light coming down from the heavens, very cool to see it depicted in so many ways. Also, as we said, very tough to know whether or not these people were seeing something strange and paranormal and perceiving it as light from the heaven coming down, or if they were seeing... Not li not light from the heaven, but light from the engine room of a Boeing 7037 from the year 2025 mm -hmm. So it's a little confusing today. The problem is, seems like art historians have pretty reasonable explanations for a lot of what we saw in these paintings today. Not true. Absolutely not true. <laughs> I think One of them they true. said was an unfinished angel. <laughs> then they said the Death Star was Earth. Right. Not That's, sure why they yeah. would have depicted Earth in an image taking place on Earth to begin with. But I don't know how much old-timey art you've seen. That shit is wild. It is bonkers. I will give you that. I will give you that. They show a lot. They even, show a lot of mad shit. Yeah, even like medieval art. If you look at some of that stuff, it doesn't even make any sense. They're pulling from like fairy tales and poems and legends and stories and mashing it all together and some of the paintings are so abstract and weird, it's very hard to figure out what is going on. Didn't you see the solar panels? The the, the gas vents right, and the yeah. solar panels? You're showing me the Japanese one again. Yeah. That one is very strange. I admit, And the portholes on the first one? <laughs> well, I the must, windows? I have to trust past Rory in the fact that there was probably a reason why we did give that one a double no. An ancient painting really isn't I enough to... I disagree with myself from the past. <laughs> I was wrong. I don't care. I don't care... I don't care if you listen to this, if you listened to the, that episode yesterday <laughs> no and now you're way. listening to this one today, that person was an idiot. What age was I even when I, when I did that? My brain probably wasn't fully formed. I certainly hadn't had 16 espressos from our fantastic new espresso machine. It is great. So I'm, I'm thinking in a higher gear now, which leads me to believe this is real. At the end of every episode, we do have to come down on a hard and fast decision on whether, just like with the Utsuro Bune back in the day, whether our present paranormal case is paranormal or not. 
I think the question today, Rory, is, I won't even say have art, <laughs> art, artists in the past. Just ask the question, man. Have they? No, <laughs> no. I won't even, no, I'm actually, I'm actually giving, throwing you a bone here okay. to make your life easier. Okay, thank you. I'm not saying have artists in the past ever depicted the paranormal. That's too broad. And I actually don't want to rule out uh, doing this again. This would actually be fun as, let's say, another bonus episode to find another amazing roster of unexplainable images and do it all again. Could what be I, photographs next time. You know? What I will ask you is, uh, do you think the artists depicted today to you have captured the paranormal? That would make it a yes. What do you mean? Have what? Have the artists today that we've looked at... Are these paranormal things going on in, these, uh, in the paintings I've showed you? Do I think these events transpired in real life and yes. they're depicting them in the, in the paintings? Yeah. Why, what, what, what would you be answering? Well, you could just say, like, is that a painting of a UFO? It's like, well, I, it could be, but whether, that's whether or not that did take place in the past. Yeah, well, if, if, if it was a painting of a UFO, then aliens are real and it is paranormal. <laughs> well, you don't know that. No, we do. That. We what, do. One dude painted the devil trying to steal a book. That doesn't mean he's real and that happened. A little imp man yeah, with a talking why butthole. that's I said it the way I said it. Which is, do you think a paranormal thing happened and these people painted it? It's a no. It's a no for <laughs> Yo, so why are you arguing me if it's, it's going to no be a no all me, along? Like... And it's a yes for me. Because that is. <laughs> because that is. <laughs> and if you're listening at home right now, if you're listening at home, because... Listen, Rory has established himself in 2024 to be a coward, right? <laughs> with the with the Florence UFO, he's established he, he's, himself to be a coward. He has. And oh, yeah. if you are sitting at home and you're thinking, Kit, you've lost the plot. Kit, it's happened again. <laughs> Kit shaved his head and lost the plot again. You're right. Go to YouTube. Well, or you could Google it, but go to YouTube.com. Search for this paranormal life. Check out the full video of this and look at this UFO. Look at this Japanese UFO and then look me in the eyes and tell me this is a no. I'm staring at the camera right now. You'd look at, zoom in right now is that, and tell me that's not a UFO. Is that the one that's, that's the one for you that's pushing you over the edge? Yeah, that or the first one. The first or the last one. Because I started strong, ended strong. Okay. You look me in the eye and tell me those aren't UFOs. Okay, okay. But I still think a pretty electrifying case, one that probably will divide people because UFOs, as we've seen this year, are divisive. Wow. And, and I think worth looking into. I can't wait to next time I'm in a gallery. Uh, Roy, I was actually thinking that, that do we need a travel show where we comb the world's art galleries looking for ancient paranormal evidence? Well, some of these sound like they were in France, right? At least one? Uh, no, all Italy, pretty Shite. much, kind of all the renaissance stuff why because we have been talking about uh you know the goals the plans for the new year one of which would include a trip to the paris catacombs oh uh to film something there but um i, I thought if there was any um of these paintings that were in you know french art museums could swing by oh but, uh, hold on where is it where is it, it uh, there's one that is french come Let on me see if it's in france come on and it is in uh, California or something. Uh, and Great. it is not on display. So that's good. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Italy we go. <laughs> Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Looking all through art history to find evidence of the paranormal. If you've got any... Uh, great ones that you know of please let us know at this paranormal life podcast at gmail.com great episode great episode kit you know i don't like this i don't like being the guy that's saying no this year the i want to say yes simply change your mind so let me tell you that yes i'm sure is right around the corner all you have to do brother is just uh you know those checks that the mib send you don't cash them you actually don't have to cash them i don't know if you know that but uh how do you think we got the coffee machine <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah, an espresso machine will cost you in this day and age um, mm. if you've enjoyed this one and if you would love to get your hands on more juicy This Paranormal Life episodes you don't have to wait hundreds of years uh, to appreciate our episodes like these Renaissance paintings they are available right now over at patreon.com forward slash This Paranormal Life oh yeah you can get access to frankly hundreds triple digits triple digis of bonus episodes from weekly after parties, the behind the scenes of the show, all the way through to full length investigations that we've been carrying out in secrecy on Patreon 
for over six years. What's your favorite reward kit that people can get on Patreon? Da coin. Ooh, the coin. We do a coin, a gold and silver coin, collector's coin, for if you are an ultimate fan of this paranormal life and you can't get enough and you want to uh, prove your membership to the commune, you oh, can yeah. pick up that coin on this paranormal life uh, Patreon. And the great thing about Patreon is if you've never been on there, all the rewards stack is the thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, when you go on there, you'll see it's like, oh, five bucks gets you all of the bonus episodes. Ten bucks gets you all of the after parties. Uh, then there's a shout out tier and then the coin. The coin's the highest, but the beauty is you get the coin, you get everything else underneath it too. Exactly. And then once you got your coin, drop down to a lower tier. That's fine. You can For do sure. that. I, yeah, we get that question sometimes. People being like, I guess they feel bad. They're like, they'll join a high tier um, and they'll be like, hey, can I just do this once and, and and we're like you could literally delete your patreon account if you just want if the you, coin if you literally just want to pay once and that's it of yeah, course doesn't bother us at all and the cool thing about the coin is you know you never know what's going to happen when you flash the coin in real life sometimes it'll get you out of a parking ticket if the police officer sees it gives you a little <laughs> wink if he thinks you're part of the stonemasons because he didn't read it right <laughs> right uh in other places flashing the coin will get you arrested on the spot it really depends on the country and how corrupt the law enforcement are within it that It kind of comes down to which side of the Civil War uh, that state was on right. uh, when you're in America. So, uh, <laughs> not really. Um, oh, one other uh, thing about joining the Patreon, if you're completely new to it, which is worth saying, is uh, back in the day, if you've ever been on Patreon before, it used to be uh, you would join and then th there was this whole like billing cycle thing of they would like charge you at the start of a month and it, it was a little confusing which is why they changed it and now if you were to join Patreon today it's just very straightforward they just like charge you once as soon as you start and then you could do whatever you want after that right it's very simple very easy to use and one of the best ways to support the show while getting a few cool extra bits it has kept this show going for all the time that it has it is uh, how this show is entirely possible as we said, head on over to youtube.com, search This Paranormal Life to see this beautiful show in high definition too. And we're on socials, lots of other cool places. As well, there is a beautiful wider universe of This Paranormal Life. The last thing I'll say, the, the Facebook group. That's one of the biggest communities where people are hanging out, talking about This Paranormal True. Life. We've got Facebook, Reddit, Discord. Woo. There's a lot of cool places you can go on, chat with people, say what, see what they think about the episode once they come out. We're like anonymous. We're, every, we're nowhere and we're everywhere. Right. Right, Search right, any right. pocket of the internet, you will find commune members. Yeah, we're anonymous online to our families, to our loved ones. Not me. Where is Rory and Kit? Where's no Rory? one knows. We can't find them. Your family them. contact me, actually, because I'm so available. They contact me to find out where you are. You tell them? Uh, sometimes. Don't tell them. That's the whole point of being... Oh, sorry, forgot to activate my, my voice changer for this podcast. That's the whole point of being anonymous. You just did an hour of podcasting without... We're going to have to do it in post. We're going to uh, have to fix it. Yeah, okay. Don't tell them where I live, okay? They said they recently, miss you. They miss you. All right. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. That's my two cents. They miss <laughs> It's so sad. They're worried about you. Oh, Silence. This has been This Paranormal Life. Any parting words for the for the good listeners, Roy? Oh, don't say my name, brother. <laughs> okay. no, don't, don't, All right. don't reveal my identity yeah. on the podcast. What do you want to be called? Nexus or something? It was, yeah. Razor. All right. And the razor, right. It changed. Sure. Because I All cut right. through the lies. Yeah. All right. Razor. And I cut ties with my family. Yeah. So you do have a family? Fine. And they financially cut off Razor. <laughs> <laughs> Razor's mother was paying Razor's rent for a long time. I call myself Razor because my mental health is on a knife's edge. <laughs> All right, Razor, this is a pretty dark way to end the show. I will Affirmative. Say. Yeah, okay. You've lost it in the last five minutes of the show. Thank you for listening. I think the espresso burnt my vocal cords. <laughs> Razor needs medical assistance. <laughs> Me and Razor will be back next week with a brand new part hotel. See you then. <laughs>